We want to welcome you again to the Wednesday night Bible classes for the uh, Stonecrest Church of Christ. Our heart is glad and, uh, each week uh, to be able to share with you convictions about our Christ uh, that are predicated upon what God has already said in his divinely inspired, inerrant, and infallible word of God. Before um, we begin this uh, new series, uh, on tonight, let me just take uh, this opportunity a few days before uh, the date that we traditionally celebrate as uh, Christmas uh, 
on behalf of uh, First Lady and I, and on behalf of uh, the leadership of our congregation, we want to extend to all of you uh, a very happy and safe uh, holiday, uh, having uh, watched and keeping my eyes on the uh, weather forecast for uh, this weekend. It's going to be really challenging and really difficult. Uh, if you are traveling, uh, be safe uh, uh, as you travel uh, and as you celebrate this traditional holiday uh, season. So we wish for you uh, the very merriest uh, of uh, the Christmas uh, holidays uh, as you spend time with uh, family and uh, with friends. And uh, just always be mindful of the, the reason for the season. Now, of course, we have commercialized it here uh, in the United States and in North America. Uh, but in the Bible, uh, at the birth of Christ, it was celebrated with worship. Uh, and if uh, the weather permits and there's no challenges to travel uh, on Sunday uh, at Stonecrest Church, we will uh, celebrate uh, by what we do every first day of the week, and that is we worship him uh, because he and he alone, uh, God and God alone, is worthy of our praise and of our adoration. Now, um, I want to begin a, uh, some studies with you uh, on a title that I call uh as you can see the graphic on the screen, uh, a snake uh, in paradise. Uh, let me tell you the background uh, of this uh, theme and uh, title uh, for me. Um, uh, more than 20, 25 years ago, uh, we were living in uh, uh, Houston, Texas, Shirley and I, uh, and uh, our young men. And uh, uh, I was able to purchase a plot of land and, and build uh, for Shirley uh, a house that uh, she designed. Um, she designed the context and the contour uh, of the house. Uh, and uh, I was able to uh, uh, purchase it uh, for her. Uh, and uh, uh, she both designed the house uh, and of course, her wonderful taste uh, in uh, arranging, so she arranged the furniture uh, in the house. Um, and I built that house with a, uh, a swimming pool uh, in the backyard. Uh, we could literally uh, walk of our, out of our uh, bedroom and, uh, and, and we were right there at swimming pool. It was very, a uh, lovely house, very uh, spacious, very uh, elegantly uh, 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 arranged because of her good taste and, and, and all of that stuff. And I remember uh, one Saturday morning, shortly after uh, we had moved uh, into uh, her paradise, her, her dream house, uh, we were actually having uh, breakfast uh, uh, around the pool. And all of a sudden, uh, from across the backyard fence, uh, it was a hot day. It was during the summertime. Uh, as we were breakfasting, enjoying each other's company, each other's uh, fellowship, uh, I saw a snake uh, come from wherever he came from, but uh, uh, underneath the uh, uh, backyard fence, uh, he crawled and uh, uh, he went to the pool, uh, got him some water, and it excited her so because she's afraid of snakes. Uh, you know, she ran back into the house. Uh, and if I was to enjoy uh, the rest of that breakfast uh, and the uh, the rest of that uh, morning time with her and fellowship, 
Uh, that snake had to be uh, removed. Uh, it's clear that he was thirsty, uh, but he, it was also equally clear uh, that he had invaded my space. Uh, and I asked him politely uh, if he had enough water to drink. Uh, he seemed to ignore my conversation with him. Uh, and so uh, I picked up the nearest object that I could uh, 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 because I'm, uh, I I'm trying to get him out of my paradise, out of my sacred space. He had already scared uh, and intimidated uh, my wife. Uh, it was uh, her paradise. It was a house that uh, uh, she had designed, that uh, she had arranged. Uh, uh, she was proud of it and uh, uh, she should have been. Uh, but a snake, entered uh, my confines, a, a, a snake uh, entered my uh, paradise and uh, he had to go. Long story short, I got him out of there. Uh, it was quite some time before she felt comfortable enough again, not only to swim in the pool, uh, but also just to hang around in the backyard because of her fear that that snake was going uh, to show up uh, again. In fact, not only did I run him out, I killed him because uh, I killed him and then I threw him uh, across, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I threw him across the fence uh, into the street and I, I just assumed that the other uh, creatures uh, would would, would take care of him. I didn't want a snake on my premises. Uh, and so uh, uh, what I want to share with you in the wish to come uh, is that a snake uh, invaded uh, the home of our first parents, Adam and Eve. Now, you know this story. I'm going to show you some passages in Genesis chapter 3 just to uh, refresh your memory uh, of the uh, account. Uh, but a snake uh, invaded uh, the home of our first parents. And unfortunately, they didn't kill the snake. The snake killed them. Preach that thing, bro, B. They, they didn't kill a snake. The snake killed them. Unfortunately, that same snake has killed you and I. Um, Romans 3.23 says, for we have all, not, not y'all, we have all sinned and have come short of the glory uh, of God. Now, I want you to be mindful of this. I'm going to take you back to uh, the shortly after God had created the heavens and the earth. Uh, he has now created man from the dust of the ground from that man. Uh, he has uh, uh, done surgery on him. Uh, pull from his side uh, a rib and form and fashion uh, a woman for that man. Earlier in chapter two, we we discovered that when God uh, uh, made uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, that paradise for that man. Uh, Adam is created outside of the garden. And then God brings him into the garden of the paradise of the home that God had created for him. 
once God did all of that, God gave him a directive. Uh, God told him uh, to uh, stay away from that tree. Uh, God told him uh, to work. God gave him access to all of the trees of the garden, that is, in his paradise, in his home, but contingent upon the fact that there was one tree that God placed in the middle of that garden. God told him, stay away from that tree. Don't, don't eat from that tree, for the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And God said to him, if you want to keep your home, if you want to keep your job, if you want to keep relationship with me, then stay away from that tree. Now, I want you to notice something. Uh, God did not make help for Adam until he had given Adam a place to live, a job that is responsibility to keep up his home. And then he gave him a directive. If you want to keep your home, if you want to keep your job, uh, if you want to keep relationship with me, stay away from the tree. After all of that had taken place, it was then that God made for Adam some help. Remember now, he had a home. He had a job. He had divine responsibilities. He had a divine relationship. He had all of this in place before God ever gave him a wife. That, that's, that's, that, that's a good paradigm. Uh, that's a good model for the singles and the singles again who are listening uh, to me uh, this night, uh, you're really not prepared uh, to be married until, first of all, uh, in the jogging and the language on the young folk, you got your own crib. Uh, you know, you, you, you still stand with mom and daddy. Well, you may not be ready, uh, may not uh, be ready. Uh, well, you don't have a job. Well, I, you, you are not ready. If you don't have the responsibility and the means and the income to take care uh, of a wife, don't get married. And young ladies, don't marry somebody who doesn't have a job. So, well, he's going to get one. No, don't, don't, don't marry that kind of promise. That's some stuff you ought to have in the hand before you say, I do. Now, I'm not talking about marriage here tonight, so uh, let, let, let me get back on the uh, on, on the title and the text and the responsibility that this message demands. I, I want you to watch something now. After he had gotten all of that, uh, God gave him a wife. Now, remember, God has repeated uh, these instructions to Adam. God gave them to Adam. He didn't give them to Adam and Eve because uh, Eve was not there. So uh, Adam is the one who has responsibility. God told him, look, this is your home. This is your job. Uh, uh, this is your responsibility. Uh, this is your directive. If you want to have a continuing fellowship and relationship with me, it's going to be contingent upon it's going to be dependent upon your staying away from the tree in the middle of the garden. Now, uh, I want you to watch something here. Well, I tell you what, let's just look at the text. Uh, beginning at uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3, uh, it, it starts out like this. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had, oh my goodness, that passage is so pregnant uh, with truth that it gives birth even uh, as I speak. It starts out by saying now, 
Well, that's not the way you start out sentences <laughs> in Hebrew or in Greek. When you see a sentence starting out like, now the serpent, well, you, you, you got to back that thing up. Uh, notice when the serpent shows up uh, in the garden, uh, in the paradise of God, <clears throat> it's after Adam gets a crib. It's after uh, Adam gets a wife. It's, it's after uh, God had given him a job and divine instruction. Well, watch this. It was after all of that that now Genesis 3, 1 opens up by saying, now the serpent was most, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. And I'm, and I'm going to deal with this in the weeks to come because we got to ask the question. If, if that's the paradise of God, and it is, uh, if that's the Garden of Eden, and it is, if that's the home of God, uh, 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 the home of Adam and Eve, uh, and it was, where'd snake come from? Well, that's a good question. Pin it, and I'm going to answer it uh, in the weeks to come. I want you to see uh, the uh, the overall story before we start getting specific in terms of his details. Now, the serpent, the snake, was more crafty than, than any beast of the field. Watch this. Which the Lord God had made. Now, I, I want you to notice that I've emphasized the term Lord God. <laughs> oh my goodness. I told you the passage is pregnant with truth. Notice uh, the Lord God, Lord God, no, notice not just God. In Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, and the term in Genesis 1, 1 for God is, is Elohim. Uh, that, that's the God with power. Uh, that, that, that's the creator God. Mm. You, you, oh, my goodness. Please hear me now. In Genesis 1, 1, uh, in the beginning, God, uh, the, the Hebrew term for God, is a term that talks about his power. It's a term that talks about his might. And you'll remember uh, that God creates not by touching. God creates by speaking. But the emphasis on the word is his the power and the authority of his voice. But when we get to Genesis 3, 1, he's no longer referred to as God. He's referred to as, watch this, the Lord God. Well, well wait a minute, what? Well, what, what's significant about that? All right, let, 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 let me see if I can just show it to you uh, in other passages, and then I'll back back up uh, to uh, Genesis uh, uh, three one here. I want you to notice first of all uh, that the term for Lord is in all uppercase letters. Hmm. Well. There has to be something significant about that. You 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 pointed out to us. Uh, what is it? Well, let, let, let me show it to you. At, at, at Genesis 22, as you can see the graphic on the screen, um, at Genesis 22 and verse number 30, um, now, 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 now notice what this is. This is Genesis, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is Psalms uh, 22 and verse number 30. All right, Psalms 22 and verse number 30. Now, there are 31 verses uh, in, in, in uh, 31 stanzas in this particular psalm, but I want you to watch something. 
is Psalms number 22 and 30. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the, did you see it? Lord, for a generation. Look how Lord is spelled. It is spelled capital L, small O, small R, small D. Hmm. Why is that significant? All right. All right. Now I'm going back up to the previous slide. And I want you to watch this again. In the previous slide, Genesis 20, uh, Genesis uh, 3, verse 1. Now, now the serpent was more subtle than uh, any beast of the field, which the, now look how Lord is spelled. The Lord God had made. It is spelled capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now, at Genesis, <laughs> my, my mind is scrambled here. I, 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 I'm waiting on Santa Claus and I'm getting anxious, all right? Uh, now, now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. But when we go to Psalm 22, 30, the same English word for Lord is used, but look how it is spelled. It is spelled capital L, small o, small r, small d. It translates, watch this, the Hebrew word called Adonai. Adonai is a title of God. It is one of more than 350 different designations for God in the entirety of the Bible. Now, uh, God has a lot of appellations. Uh, God has a lot of titles, but God has a personal name. I'm going to show you that in the next slide. I want you to watch this. The term for God here is not Elohim. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. The term there, Elohim. But the term here is Adonai. It's a title that talks about him being master. It is a title that refers to his majesty, his rulership. Now, uh, let, let me explain it to you this way. Uh, I have a lot of titles. Uh, but I have a personal name. My personal name is Richard Lee Barclay. That's my personal name. That's, uh, that's my given name. But watch this. In academic circles, I'm referred to as Doc Barclay. Well, Doc Barclay ain't my name. Uh, at least... <laughs> Uh, not, not, not my given name. I wasn't born Dr. Barclay. I was born Richard Lee Barclay. But I answer to Dr. Barclay. Because when you refer to me, and all doctor means is teacher. <laughs> that, that, that's all doctor means, folks. Uh, it, it's just another synonym for teacher and our instructor. Uh, that, 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 that's all doctor means. All right, now I want you to watch this. Uh, in academic circles, and even sometimes here at the building, I'm, I'm introduced as, as, as Dr. Barclay. Uh, because I'm married, uh, another one of my titles of relationship is husband. Uh, only one woman on the planet calls me husband. Uh, because I'm a father of, of two wonderful sons, uh, I'm referred to as a poppy, uh, as, 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 as pops. My son calls me uh, pops. My daughter-in-law calls me poppy. Well, poppy ain't my name, but I answered to it. But I only answered uh, to three persons. Uh, poppy 
and that's uh, uh, our two sons uh, and our uh, lovely and wonderful uh, daughter-in-law. Now, I want you to watch this. I've just said Doc Bartley. Uh, I just said husband. Uh, I just said a father. Uh, uh, people here at the church uh, refer to me as from B. Well, uh, B ain't my name, but I answer to it. Uh, it is an endearing term of relationship. Uh, so when somebody calls me, uh, bro B, and, and most of the folk around here uh, uh, at Stonecrest Church refer to me uh, as bro B, sir, but, but it's not my given name. Uh, all I'm trying to show you is because of certain relationships we have, we are referred to by certain appellation. Um, I have a book, uh, and I'm pointing to it on my shelf, uh, that talks about all of the names of God in the Bible. There are more than 350 different names and appellations and designations for God in the Bible. But of all of those names and titles and appellations in regards to God, come here, come here, come here, come here. God has a personal name. Watch this. The next slide will help us out here. It's Psalms 23, 1. It's on your screen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, you missed your shout right through there. You see, the term for Lord now, watch this. We've gone from Psalms 22, 30 that uses the term Lord to Psalms 23, 1, that uses the same English term for Lord, but it's a different Hebrew term for Lord. In point of fact, whenever you see Lord in all uppercase letters, it's always the personal name for God. Teach the Bible. The personal name for God is Jehovah. <laughs> Watch this. God has a lot of titles, a lot of appellations, a lot of names, but he has a personal name. And his personal name is Jehovah. You can always recognize it in the King James translation of the Bible because they will always put it in uppercase letters. Now, this is what you need to know, and this is what you need to appreciate. Whenever you see Lord, all uppercase letters, the writers of scripture are trying to let you know that it has to do with God relationally. Mm. Let me back this thing up. Let me go back now to uh, Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the, watch this. Yahweh Elohim. Mm. Yahweh Elohim. God is Elohim, but Lord is Jehovah or Yahweh, which means, watch this, he's not, he doesn't just have power, but he wants relationship. He's not just a creator God, but he is a relational God. Well, okay, brother, I, I heard all of that, but Watch this. What's the point? Watch this now. Uh, when we go back to Genesis 3, 1, as you can see, uh, the passage on the screen, this is the rest of Genesis 3, 1. He's talking about the snake. He's talking about his craftiness. He's talking about his, his subtleness. And he said to the woman, that is the snake, yea, 
had God said, okay, you you you, you didn't connect the dots. That's that's okay. That's okay. Watch this. The snake, and I'm going to identify him for you shortly. Uh, the snake really doesn't care that much that you believe in the power of God just as long as you don't have a relationship with him. Trying to hold this shaft. He, he doesn't care if you, you believe in the power of God. Notice, Satan does not, the snake, and I just gave it away, uh, the snake doesn't care that you believe in the power of God. He doesn't care. He just doesn't want you to see him as Lord. To see him as Lord means you have a relationship with him. He does not approach the woman from the advantage of her relationship with God, but on the basis of her power with God. See him as God of all power. Cool in the game, just don't have a relationship with him. And he said unto the woman, yeah, had God said, you should not eat of every tree of the God. Okay, 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 okay. We read too fast. All right, watch this. I want you to watch out. I want you to watch. I want you to observe the fact that <laughs> Satan begins by casting doubt on the authority of what God said. Watch this. He questioned, uh, uh, hey, 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 says girl, g girlfriend, had God really said, you shall not eat of every tree of the God? Watch this. It demonstrates his craftedness. It, it demonstrates his, his subtleness. See, he began questioning. The first question ever asked in the Bible. Tweet it. The first question ever asked in the Bible. Tweet it. The first question ever asked in the Bible was a question that questioned the authority of what God said. Satan always starts out that way. The snake always starts out that way. He always began by questioning. That's why people question the Bible. See, if you start questioning the Bible, now has God really said one man for one woman for one lifetime? Has God really said that you can't have sex until you get married? Has God really said it's just one church. Has God really said that baptism is not a part of the salvation process? Has God really said that? See, he began by asking you questions when, in fact, he's questioning the authority of what God said. Now, now, what? Watch the next one. Uh, and the woman said unto the serpent. We may eat of the fruit uh, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let, let me deal with some of these traditions and some of these myths uh, surrounding uh, uh, the fruit of the tree. Uh, how many times have you heard that uh, uh, they ate of the apple? The Bible just said the fruit of the tree. No, no specific fruit is named. Uh, I like what one guy said when he said, the problem was not the apple on the tree. The problem was the pear on the ground. Okay. 
I think you missed it, but that's all right. Uh, it, it, it wasn't, it could have been an apple. The, the Bible didn't say. It just says the fruit of the tree. She said to him, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Watch this. God ain't said nothing about touching. Now she's going on, and now she's adding restrictions that God had not specifically stated. Now, it, it, it's clear. Uh, if you go uh, eat it, you, you, you got to touch it. This is what you need to see. She added a restriction. She added a prohibition that God had not said. Now, the implication is that, but you got to hear this from the vantage point of what the snake is trying to get him to see, remember. Uh, he, he's trying to get her to doubt. He, he's trying to get her to question. Oh, God sure is restricted. Uh, God doesn't want you having any fun. God doesn't want you living a good life. God doesn't want you happy. God just wants you in church all day long, listening to long, boring preachers preach, long, boring sermons. Okay, in the minutes that I have left here. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall. Isn't that interesting? We've gone from doubting to denying. See, the snake got it where he wants it. He's and, 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 and please take notice of the fact snake ain't talking to the man. He's talking to the woman. Now that's, uh, that's a whole lot of preaching and another sermon all by itself. But remember that the original directive was given to the man before that, before the woman ever got there. That's strategic. The snake. It's slick. He's sly. He's crafty. He's subtle. He knows who to go to. Just like he knows who to go to in your church. He knows who will listen to your gossip. He knows who will listen to your slander. He knows who will listen to your mess. You can't tell everybody that, but you can tell somebody that. And watch this and, ser and, and the serpent know. And I'm going to show you why. He knows it just second. But I want you to watch this. Uh, at verse 5, he says, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes will be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And watch the next verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Now, I want you to watch something. And this is what the rest of this series is going to be about. The six lies that Satan told in that story. Mm, let, let, let me just give them to you. And then I'll come back in the weeks to come and uh, outline uh, and explain all of them to you. Uh, watch this. First lie Satan wants you to believe is this. That he doesn't exist. <laughs> Watch this. He wants you to think he looks like that. A red figure dressed in a red uh, pajama suit, pitchfork in his hand, uh, horns on his head. He wants you to think that, 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 that that's the way he looks. Watch this. He wants you to think that he's a snake. All right? Because watch this. We'll run from a snake. But watch this. He does not want you to know that he's an angel. But he's a fallen angel. And then I want you to watch this. I want you to see the other lies. I will explain this to you in which to come. Uh, lie number one, I do not exist. Lie number two, or you ought to put it in the chat. God's holding out on you. You you mean all of the trees in the garden, and, and God says you 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 can't eat from that one, but you can eat from all the rest of them. Uh, watch this. God God's holding out on you. Lie, lie number three. 
God's word can't be trusted. Had God said, did God really say? I mean, come on, girlfriend. Come on, home boy. You, you can't really trust God's word. Watch this. Trust your feelings. Mm. Oh, this thing going to get good. Trust your traditions. Trust mama them. Trust papa them. Uh, trust your preacher. Trust your pastor. Trust your elders. Trust your pope. Trust your religious leaders. Just don't trust God's word because God's word can't be trusted. Watch this one. Sin carries no consequences. Watch this. You can eat of that tree and ain't nothing going to happen to you. Except, of course, watch, watch this one. Except, of course, you can be equal with God. <laughs> oh, listen. Uh, and then finally, he says to them, look, look, as a tree to be desired to make one wife, if it feels good till you do it, and we're going to examine each one of these lies in the days to come. And I want to share something with you. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, but, 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 but uh, uh, one of the things I'm going to show you next week is I'm going to show you a picture of a snake. A snake is a creature that does not have eyelids. His eyes are open 24-7. Watch this. He doesn't blink. Now, you, you can watch my eyes for the rest of this program. You, you're going to see my eyelids going up and down. I, I, I blink. That's the reason we have eyelids. Snake doesn't have eyelids. And when, watch this. A snake can look at you straight in straight and see what's going on over there. See, for me to see what's going on over there, I got to turn my head. Snake didn't have to turn his head. He knows what's going on right over there. <laughs> we're we're going to study this snake uh, because this snake has invaded our world and our paradise. I hope you'll join us in the weeks to come. Uh, as we look at a snake in paradise, subtitle Six Lies That Satan Told and Satan Is Still Telling. Join us, please. And until then, may the Lord of the harvest bless you. May he bless you real good. And have a very wonderful uh, holiday with your family and with your friends and with your neighbors. And just be mindful uh, to bless someone this holiday season who may not enjoy the blessings that you and your family enjoy. Be blessed and be safe.